Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're doing awesome and I hope you're getting ready for the end of 2021 and welcoming in 2022. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about what the essential skills, in my opinion, uh, that you will need to be successful as a chief engineer or a facility manager. And then I want to give a couple examples of some things that have really made the most impact and just kind of give you a reference as to what those look like and uh, what you can do to move the needle the most so that you're not just kind of going around, wandering around aimlessly in your career and that you're hitting on the things that are really going to impact not only you professionally, but impact the organization that you work for so that you can both have this mutually beneficial um, relationship and something that will allow you to continue to grow and continue to benefit the company that you're at. So I'll hop right into it. All right, so I wanted to highlight with you kind of the essential skills of a chief engineer or facility manager that I think are good to help you uh, become and be the most successful in this position, or if it's something you're aspiring to be currently, um, what are the key skills and traits that you're gonna need uh, to become a facility manager or chief engineer? So get right into it. Uh, what are the key responsibilities? So as the operations and maintenance department, leader or department head, uh, your primary responsibilities are going to be your entire maintenance department, the maintenance department leadership team. So if you have supervisors, team leads, maybe uh, if you have a central plant, a central plant lead, a shift lead, whatever you want to call it, you're going to be overseeing these individuals. Uh, generally, you're going to be overseeing the landscape, uh, landscaping department, some cases, and in my experience, you've also been in charge and over the shipping, receiving, and inventory. Inventory is tricky because as the owner of the shipping receiving, you also are in charge of everything that hits the dock. So depending on how many departments you have, you're going to want to have a robust system in place for tracking, monitoring, knowing where these assets live, are they consumables, um, or do they have part numbers or P numbers? Do you have a three-way match? There's a lot of different things you're going to have to put into this program. So this can end up uh, taking up a lot of your time depending on how many things you're shipping and receiving. Uh, EHS, so again, that's the employee health and safety. Sometimes this falls under the facility manager. If not, it can be very closely related to it. You're going to have to work in tandem with them because so much of what goes on in the building uh, you're responsible for. It's, it's a great partnership to have. And then you're also going to want to form really strong partnerships with other departments throughout your organization. So if that's not your organization, so if that's a hotel, it's going to be your housekeeping, front desk, uh, you know, spa, all, all other department heads. If it's just your typical facility setting, maybe a commercial, it's still going to be the department heads uh, within that organization. So office manager, perhaps uh, other departments and, and their respective uh, leadership team, you're going to want to form great partnerships with them as well to understand their needs and make sure that you're doing what you can um, to support them. And the reference I put in here is that it's a lot like a gym. So for those of you who have gone to the gym, they have done a great job selling equipment that doesn't do a whole lot, right? For those of you who are into athletics, you understand that core compound movements are primarily the only things you need to focus on and that are going to yield the most results and generally the only things you need to focus on. See those people with uh, you know, doing a one-armed dumbbell press on the Swiss ball with their leg in the air. I can tell you right now that that's not accomplishing anything. And the same is true with facility management. You're going to get the opportunity to be pulled in a lot of different directions and there are a lot of things that you think you could be focusing on or should be focusing on uh, and they look important. I will tell you that they, they might look it but it's a Trojan horse, right? It's something that you don't want to fall into the trap of doing things that aren't the highest and best use of your time and you want to make sure what you're doing has the greatest impact on the facility. So that's my analogy. It's a lot like a gym uh, in that sense. So the engineering team, what does that mean? What does that look like for you? Well, the most important thing that you can be doing as a leader and what I think defines a leader is how much you're developing those around you and how much you're contributing to their success. So coaching for me is something that's huge. If you can spend uh, once a week with the majority of your team, key members of your team, or divide that up so that other leadership 
parts of your team are meeting with the with your entire staff, uh, that's going to be key to success, right? So making sure you're, you're spending that one-on-one -on -one time, giving feedback, giving the opportunity for them to give you feedback in addition uh, is huge. The second is uh, controllable expenses, you know, ensuring that the controllable costs are uh, something that you can predict, you can foresee, you can maintain. Controllable costs, right? There, there's a lot that goes on in the facility that maybe it's not budgeted for, but just because it's not budgeted for doesn't mean you're not going to repair it. Uh, it just means that it was an unforeseen expense. Something breaks, something bursts, uh, something's not on a PM plan, That something out of the norm that even if it's on a PM plan just kind of wreaks havoc for you. But things that you can control, you can control the majority of time. So it's your labor, and there are certain overhead costs, maybe utilities, maybe trash, um, you know, certain projects that you're, you have going on, things that you can do, whatever you can do to control expenses. And I'll give you a really quick uh, example uh, in a minute. Systems, right? Systems are so important to your success as a facility manager. And the example I like to use is that of a professional sports team, maybe even a college level, one that always makes the top 10 every year without fail. What allows that team to bring to, to continue to meet that expectation when they have a series of issues that they're having to deal with every year? Every year they lose players. Every year they have to train new players. Every year they have players that get injured. They have to reposition. Uh, they have everything that you have as a team going on, yet they still seem to make it to those the top tier, right? Whether it's your final four, uh, top 10, whatever the criteria is, how did they get there? And the answer is they have the right systems in place. And that is exactly true for you and your department. You need to spend a lot of time redefining procedures, policies, systems and controls, whether it's your preventative maintenance program, SOPs, uh, general workloads, and what your training look like. Um, I put in here that you have to be careful when you come into the pos this position that you're going to want to change everything and you're going to want to make that name for yourself. And I will caution you and advise you to hold off and kind of step back a little bit and let the momentum of what's been going continue to go and what's working continue to work. Let that set aside and focus on what needs true repair, right? Don't come in there trying to change the entire department all in one fell swoop because not only is it impossible, but you're going to chop yourself up into so many pieces that you're not going to be able to accomplish anything well at all. So focus on what you can change and really start to tackle that low hanging fruit and then just start to take notes. Be a, be a vigilant note taker, right? Something that you can go back to after your 30, 60, 90, however many days, uh, set up a cadence that you can reflect back on this and then readdress those problems or I, opportunities that you've identified uh, at a later date. But definitely don't go in there hot off the press trying to change change the world. I also put in there, if you can foresee it, you can prevent it, right? This is something that's pretty straightforward, but something that I've loved in the facility management world. If you know it's going to happen, you can prevent it. Maybe, maybe you can't prevent it from breaking, but you can prevent something from uh, causing downtime. So you can have supplemental backup in place. You can have something in tandem. You can have a plan in place, depending on what is going to occur, that will allow you to be set up for it so that you can have that success. So ensuring you are executing an effective preventative maintenance program that's sustainable, maintainable, and not done in vain that ends up just being worthless. So many times people go through the motions of things without actually putting any thought into it. So all you're doing is maintaining an already poor system that's in place. So you really want to create something that um, is is making lasting change and that is focused on continuous improvement. Tracking department goals, right? This is something that's huge. You need to sit down with your team. You need to sit down with your leadership group. You need to sit down with the leaders of other departments and you need to establish goals. Say, hey, what's important to you in order to run a successful department within the facility, right? And to ask them from a facility standpoint needs. Um, what are some of the complaints you get, right? Chances are you're going to have a CMMS that's going to allow you to research the history of what's been going on. So you can identify a lot of issues that are on the surface level, but also talk about the things that people don't bring up. Like if they walk into an area and it makes them feel 
dirty or smelly or some things that are maybe hard to quantify that a fresh coat of paint, some updated lighting uh, is really going to change the morale of a specific department, right? So get to talk to these leaders, get to talk to the staff, start to establish and track goals. So here's a quick example um, that says, you know, CMMS, what do we want to accomplish from a maintenance uh, management standpoint from the software aspect? Uh, I picked, for example, laundry preventative maintenance. Hey, I spoke with the laundry uh, department and these are some things that they need. Uh, and then just going through inventory, tools, kitchens, pool spas, air handlers, so on and so forth. But make sure you have something that you publish that your entire department is aware of so that you can all be moving as one body towards accomplishing these goals. This one is huge. Uh, the engineering budget, right? This thing is a beast. It's terrible. It's awful. It's also wonderful, amazing, right? It's the, kind of the keys to freedom and it will also keep you in shackles and handcuffs if you're not able to establish something properly. This also goes in tandem with the uh, goals that you set for your department. If you have the opportunity to work with your controller, your finance team, this is something that you're going to want to establish and I can talk about at a later date, but definitely developing your, your engineering budget or your maintenance budget. Communication. Um, you are the ambassador for your department and probably the one of the most visible people within the organization because you're bouncing around from building to building department to department, you're the one running block on all of the day-to-day -day issues that are ongoing, whether it's heating, cooling, hot water, kitchen equipment, pool, spa, roof leaks, depending on the weather, the temperature, I mean, the, anything and everything, you're going to be dealing with it. So ensuring that you have a very high level of diplomacy, you understand that you can't take this personal and that you're on the same team because you also want to get this resolved, that their issues are your issues. So being very empathic to whatever comes across your desk or comes across your plate is something that you absolutely need to relate, empathize, and set actionable goals as to how you're going to recover from this and what your action plan is to resolve this and prevent this from happening in the future. Um, who, again, I think I touched on that earlier, is it's everyone, right? So from the day porters to the housekeepers to landscaping, could be engineering, architects, board members. I mean, it really runs investors, CEOs, everybody and anybody. So ensuring that you have that really high level of communication, diplomacy, those soft skills. I would work really hard on developing the soft skills that you can because it's going to pay off so, so much. It's going to be, be 10x the investment. What does the typical experience uh, of a facility manager or chief engineer look like? It's, it's really broad and depending on the place you're applying to or the application, whether it's a little, a few smaller buildings doing pr property management uh, or very, very large facilities where they're 3D printing rockets, right? I mean, it can, it can range the gamut and it, it depends so much on where you're going. So as a general rule of thumb, it can be between three and five years. Um, the physical requirements are, are generally performed indoors. I would say that you're gonna be doing a lot of walking. I walk on average about five miles a day uh, on the low end, and I think the furthest I've walked is about 15 miles, and that's when we're doing just a ton of different projects going on. Um, so it's not uncommon to just be on your feet, lifting, moving, pushing, uh, driving forklifts, different types of power equipment, uh, operating a lot of different things. So the, the day can really, really range. Um, I also found it interesting that they, they, took a, they took a study and they found that employers were 84% more likely to hire someone who had the right attitude, even if they were lacking certain skills and training. So making sure that you're showing up with the right attitude every day, this kind of goes back to ensuring that you're you're extremely diplomatic you have a lot of empathy and you understand that you're just trying to solve the issues for everybody and don't take things personally because it's not personal um I, at least i hope not um and so what does the what do the hard skills look like a uh, minimum of five years oh, excuse me a minimum of five years of experience uh generally in engineering management, hotel, resort, property management, facility management, that vein. 
the preferred certifications are generally HVAC, Universal EPA, CPO. Some of them are OSHA 30, uh, but that's, that's typical. I would say that you have to have a pretty strong working knowledge of electrical systems, plumbing, HVAC, boilers, pools, and spas. Now, when I mean electrical systems, it's troubleshooting. It's ensuring that you can plan out spatial requirements for future power needs, looking at your, your switch gear and, and making sure that you can cal do basic calculations, load calculations, uh, understand that you're going to have to calculate costs, um, electrical demand, time of use, so a handful of different things there. HVAC, I would say there's an emphasis on building automation and the building automation controls. You're going to also have to have a strong working knowledge of uh, just general engineering and those best practices, which kind of align with standard operating procedures, kind of that methodical workflow. Uh, sometimes it's Famica, sometimes it's 5S, sometimes it's Six Sigma. So there's a handful of different engineering mindsets that go along with it. I think we touched on the communication and interpersonal skills. Um, there's a handful of different softwares out there. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, CMMS, Jira, Confluence, everything that everybody's using. The other thing I put in here is that cross-training is free, right? So also don't forget to take advantage when you start to work for a company like this or you're in the position to, to possibly get uh, a level up is that go around to your other departments. Start to ask vibrant questions that uh, really can help help you, right? You probably work with some very smart people who are more than willing to carve out some time during the week to help you uh, advance some skill, help develop yourselves. People love sharing information and they love people who are curious and they, that want to learn. And I can say that that's a, a great thing to do is take advantage of the team that you have because chances are they're, they're really more than willing to to help you become better and excited to share that information. So, for, so again, those would be my top lists of what the keys to an engineering or facility manager would be. And those would be the most important things that I would say uh, have contributed to my success throughout the years. Uh, and I would couple that with an insatiable appetite for knowledge and somebody that's always looking to be the best at getting better and somebody that's open to, to criticism, that's willing to learn, that shows up with the right attitude and that is really not afraid to fail in the sense that they're willing to continue to try new things. And so whether that's uh, you're personally enrolling in a public speaking course, maybe you're trying an Excel course, uh, you're not afraid or embarrassed, too embarrassed to try something new for fear of failure. So keep working on yourself, always work harder on yourself than you do at your job. Uh, keep asking questions, don't stop asking questions and take advantage of your surroundings. Make sure that you realize the people around you are probably very smart and they're more than willing to help out. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you're having a great last couple days of 2021 and that you have a fantastic new year and that uh, everything that you want comes true. Your success, happiness, health, and I hope you have a great day. Make sure you please like, subscribe, and tune in to the next video.